Yeah, okay. uh, let me turn that on, and then theoretically, if I've got all the volume knobs right, we should be live on on the Twitch because you know we're hip happening guys, aren't we? I mean, that's right. Right? Nothing says hip happening like a couple of middle aged white guys on Twitch. <laughs> um, well. Well, I say it's good morning for you. It's good afternoon for me. It's the lunch hour for me. But good morning to you, my good friend, Daniel Hinojosa, is joining us here on the Between Chair and Keyboard, my weekly opportunity to hang out with my friends and, and call it work. Thanks for joining me, Dan. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> good. Good, good, good. Fantastic. Well, why don't you tell people a little bit about yourself before we dive into topics that we have been discussing for the last 20 minutes while we prepped here? Uh, uh, I'm uh, Daniel Linhosa. I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico. And if you're a fan of Breaking Bad, uh, most of yeah, most of where uh, the events occurred on Breaking Bad, like the car wash, the taco restaurant, uh, the lawyer's office. Lawyer's office is probably in the same shopping center as where I get my dog food. I am in that neighborhood. Uh, Walter White's house is about a mile and a half from my house. And um, uh, it used to be just like a, any any house within the neighborhood. Uh, now it's it's you know fenced up under lock and key. Uh, people were putting um, uh, some sorts of Italian food, I guess. I'll put it that way without oh, giving okay. too Checks much out. Um, um, on or in the house. I won't be very descriptive about it. If you know the show, you probably know what I'm talking about. Italian food and a house were combined in some sort of <laughs> in some sort of way. Yeah. Uh, but a uh, long time ago, back in the uh, uh, a time called the 90s. Uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> that's in the before times, kids. The before times, that's right. Uh, I was doing, uh, I was a uh, programmer doing some uh, Lotus Notes programming, Domino programming. And you're going to admit that? Yeah. Wow. Well, here's what it was. And so uh, I said, hey, uh, workplace. Uh, can you um, send me to Palm Springs? There's a Lotus Notes conference nice. there. Yeah, it was. And I didn't realize what like nice software conferences were like. Sure. But nice software conferences are really nice. And so this was at, oh, this was at a La Quinta. And so if I say La Quinta, <laughs> you're probably thinking, oh, that's just like a, kind of like a mid-range or lower range right. uh, hotel. But just like a lot of hotels, uh, like Mission Hotels and La Quinta Hotels, they're usually based off of this really extravagant, beautiful uh, resort somewhere in California. Right, right. And so there is a La Quinta resort, and it was absolutely beautiful. And we played um, uh, polo uh, using uh, golf carts, and oh, it was just a great time. I had gazpacho. Like I'm just see, this I'm was before Italian. segways when you would play segway polo in the technical yeah. community. Okay. Oh wow, I never. Uh, that sounds like a lot of fun, but uh, yeah, and uh, I had gazpacho. Nice. Yeah, and I was like, that looks like tomato soup. I don't get it, and so I eat it. I'm like, wow, this shit's cold. <laughs> <laughs> But like, that was the first time I had gazpacho. Right. And uh, there was uh, someone named uh, Bob Balaban. And uh, he was doing a talk on a language uh, called Java. But he liked to call it Hava. Hava. Uh, and that was like his gimmick. It was like, yes, this language is called Hava. And so I sat there and he was, uh, he was showing off the language. And I'm like, man, he's got a lot of people here. And uh, this is great. Like, I want to be Bob Balaban. And uh you know, I want to do more Java. So the only thing that this company got, like, by the time I returned, I'm like, I want to do Java. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, no, we already have a system. Uh, and we don't, we uh, don't we're going to stick here. with it. Yeah, we don't do that here. I'm like, but I want to do Java. But uh, they didn't see it my way. So I decided, so you, you know what? <laughs> I left. Yeah. And so uh, in uh, December 1999, uh, let's see, I think this is uh, whatever the math ends up. I can't do uh, math. Come, Not at this hour. Yeah, I haven't I had enough espresso either. yet. I think this is the 21st year. So in December, wow. 1999, uh, I decided to go solo. So uh, kind of didn't have an idea of what I wanted to do, but uh, I definitely wanted to program in Java. Sure. I definitely wanted to program in J2EE because that was the, that that was was the, the thing. thing at the time. Yeah. That was and then the we thing. dropped yeah. the two because of course we did. Right. Yeah. yeah. And not only did we, back then we had IO, we didn't have NIO. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was a glorious time. And, and that, that was, that began the run of every Java one where they said, this is the year of Java on mobile. 
Oh, that's right. Because and Java runs on, on a billion mobile devices. That that, that that's was right. like the running line for a Java good 15 is everywhere. years. That's everywhere. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. J two M E J M J M E J two M E. I can't remember if that had a two in yeah. it or not. Yeah. Oh, man. But so you went straight just, into being an independent. That that's that's crazy to make that big of a leap like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I wanted, and it wasn't it wasn't quite as financial. Like that wasn't the goal. It was mm -hmm. just. Uh, I just wanted to, you know, learn technologies and, uh, you know, and so my idea was just, hey, I'm just going to hit the books, study really hard and uh, learn a technology as best as I can and then offer that as a service. Nice. And uh, I didn't really think things through that much, I, but that was it. And that was my that was my business statement right. as to what I was going to do. But then uh, that led me into uh, teaching. My first class was like a Visual Basic for Microsoft Word. Man, that's some heavy duty programming there. I was nervous as all get out. Uh, did some talks, founded the Albuquerque Java user group with uh, another person named Dwight Coles and ran that for a while. So uh, nice. it's been great. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, that, that yeah. takes a lot of courage to be fair, you know, to, to take that leap like that into the, the grand unknown. But, you know, it's, it's worked out pretty well for you, I think. Yeah, yeah. Recession, I had a few, you know, tough times here and sure. there where I didn't think I was going to make it, but yeah, it's all been fulfilling. That's awesome. So yeah. do, do you remember your first presentation at all? We were talking about that before we get started today. What is my first presentation? Wow. I mean, I think, I think I remember, I think my first one was actually at the Twin Cities Java user group, but I could be wrong on that. It's, it's pretty close. I mean, the first one I did like in public for, for any random person, as opposed to just internal things. But. whatever it was it probably was terrible yeah yeah uh, most of us are pretty bad when we first get started doing this public yeah. speaking thing yeah i think one of uh one of the uh, and i think i did terrible for uh for a couple of times uh before i really you know got going with it but uh i think one of my greatest moments like in the beginning was uh utah java, java user groups someone paid for my flight to go over to teach people about java and i did really well and nice. uh, then i started getting comfortable with it so i i probably remember more of the good stuff but uh hopefully yeah. yep although, yep. although the epic fails do stand out in your mind you know i oh, totally oh, i, I do gosh. remember one instance where I, I get started in my presentation and my laptop decided now would be the perfect time to just turn itself off. Mm -hmm. And that gave me a good five minutes of just complete panic as I tried to figure out why. And you know, the machine came back on, so it was fine. But, but at least I didn't get nervous because I was like so focused on my God, my laptop, and I'm not how much life get is this? terrible because I, re I remember a lot of failures. And sometimes they brew, they brew up when I'm doing like a chore, like washing dishes or something. Right. And I'll let out like a cuss word. And it just seems like I'm mentally unstable. Right. But like what nobody knows is I'm living. I'm living again a bad presentation, right. and why did I do that? And I right. have so much regret for it, but I can't help what my brain concurrently comes up with. <laughs> or, or when <laughs> background thread. Or when, right? I mean, it's like you, I, I, for me, it's when I try to go to sleep. All those things start popping back in your head, and you're like, "Oh yeah, I remember that." You know, it's just it's it's random how that stuff comes up. But yeah. oh, sweet killer yeah. nine, I'm I'm actually checking out my comments today because I'm 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 paying attention. Where's a good place to start in terms of, of how to give presentations? Certainly oh, doing it internally yeah. is good and then kind of working your way up. I, I will say that most user groups are delighted to have almost anybody come present because typically one of the biggest challenges is finding people. So it never hurts to start there. But I will say, I don't, I don't know about you, Dan, but I, I usually give presentations to my cats first and then I kind of go from there. But everybody kind of has yeah. their own process. It's great too because if any animal in the animal kingdom is going to criticize you to no end, oh, it's a cat. It's a cat. Yeah, yeah it's definitely a mm -hmm. cat. Hundred percent. The disappointment that they show towards yes. you, yes, yes, is uh, is absolutely something that you know at least gives you a lot of practice before you go. Out There's no the empathy world. there. No empathy. <laughs> Cats will prepare you for the worst audiences you'll ever have. Yeah, hundred percent. Right. Uh, but you know what? Uh, in answer to that question. Uh, it's a pandemic. And like, there are a lot of bad things that happen in a pandemic that we know of. But there are some good things too. And so if you want to start giving presentations, now is the best time, uh, just because you're in your home. And that is a great way to give presentations, especially if you're beginning. Because if you are not, I shouldn't say exposing yourself in the bad way, but mm, yeah. you know what I mean, like when you give a presentation, you're making yourself vulnerable. Oh, yeah. 
to these eyes that just stare at you like daggers and you're giving a tough presentation like all technical presentations are are just tough uh but with zoom you kind of have like a set of training wheels and so if you want to do it you know talk to some java user groups and here's the other thing about a pandemic uh, during a pandemic, user groups don't belong to cities anymore. Right. They belong to time zones, essentially, or they belong to the country as a whole. Right. Like, you know, you could be delivering something in the Pacific time zone and uh, people on the East Coast will be interested in your talk. If they're not interested, they're not going to go. And that was one of the things that really helped me out a lot uh, was uh, I had to tell myself I got a lot of bad advice. I got a lot of good advice uh, through the years. Uh, but uh, one of the advices that I received was from me that I actually thought about, and that is uh, people go to your talk because they want to hear what you have to say. Right. If they don't want to hear what you have to say, they're not going to go. Right. And so you go in there with a little bit more confidence of just like, hey, you know, it's not I'm dictating to you. It's not that I know everything. It's just that I have some information that I prepared for, that I researched for. And I just like to share it with you. Right. And if you go in with that mindset, uh, that's a great way to get started. You know, Sweet Killer's also talking about, you know, putting stuff out on YouTube. And there, there's a lot to be said for that. You know, when, when I first started, I, I don't remember when exactly YouTube came online, but it certainly wasn't as common to see that as it is today. <laughs> All right. The, the yeah. one thing that you have to prepare yourself for if you're going to put anything out on the interwebs, there will be someone who's going to leave a negative comment. I mean, just 100% guarantee. It does, it. You know, you, you learn this after like your third talk. That doesn't matter how good or bad a job you did. There's always somebody in the audience who thinks you're an idiot and somebody in the audience who thinks you're a genius. And the truth is probably somewhere more in between. You know, but mm -hmm. you, you have to kind of mentally gird yourself for the fact that somebody is going to have an opinion on, on what yeah. you, your, your work right. and how you did. So you just have yep. to be ready for that and get really thick skin. Yep, totally. And thick skin is like uh, absolutely important. Yeah, you're you're going to get bashed. You're going to get dinged. Uh, absorb it. Learn from it. Uh, I'm not saying ignore it, but right. uh, you're just going to have to move on. Uh, so uh, the worst advice for speaking, uh, I don't know who said this, but it like stuck in my brain and it was like actually horrible. But one of them was uh, always go into a talk assuming uh, everyone's everyone knows more about the topic than you do, which is just absolutely horrible. Yeah. That didn't work. Just made no. me more nervous, more right. anxious, and just like really screwed me over. Uh, Neil Ford gave me some really great advice. Uh, and just to give yourself a little bit of slack in that uh, the first two talks, and that's the thing, give, give talks multiple times. Um, and uh, Nate and I do that uh, quite a bit. And uh, Nate and I, I don't know how you feel about this, Nate, but like Neil told me, your first two talks are going to suck, or at yeah. least as far as you go. And maybe we they're have, not going to be know, your best. They're not going to be your best. Uh, and in fact, uh, Nate and I were talking about before uh, we came on, just how our brains are get really connected. And we, you know, we feel energized and we feel really mm -hmm. smart when we give a talk and one of the things that happens when we give a talk is is our brain will just say oh shit that is a great idea why don't you think of that when you were preparing for it but you're in the middle of a talk so what are you going to do right, right. Uh, neil told me he he like records he hits record on his phone just to give him like a like a little mental marker so he could go back and and right. change his talks but uh yeah your talks your talks i think have to be cultivated over time that's something i didn't I didn't really understand or appreciate it at the very beginning. Well, it's it's a lot like the way comedians build their material. And so I've seen a couple of different documentaries on this. One was was Jerry Seinfeld walking through <clears throat> his creating all new material for a brand new special. And then I saw another one recently with um, oh god, I'm blanking on the 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 I can see her face so clearly, but but a, another comedian showing how she created this material. And what you realize is like there's this one scene that's always stuck in my head is Seinfeld is in this club with a bunch of other comedians like Colin Quinn and other folks. And he'd just done a 45 minute set at some some comedy club. And he said, Yeah, I think I got a good three minutes out of that set. You know, and, and you realize how much of this is workshopping it, trying it, see what happens. And it takes usually three or four times to even know what the talk is about. You know, I, I did yeah. one presentation a number of years ago comparing and contrasting Angular and React. And I think it was the third or fourth time I gave it that I realized the interesting part here was not comparing and contrasting Angular and React. It was how do you compare and contrast technologies 
because there's always going to be another instance of, hey, these two are like each other. Which one should we use? That's wow. the more interesting nugget here. And then that grew into a completely different talk. Well, similar talk, wow. obviously, but a whole nother thing. And, and I realized that's right. actually much more applicable in the real world. So right. It's, right. But that didn't occur to me, even as I'm writing material to say, oh, yeah, here's how I compared yeah. and contrasted these two things. Well, here's how you would do it on a more generic scale. You but, can't see it. And it's amazing how much there's an intellectual fog that's out there that you really don't even get the point of of your own presentation that you're right. delivering right. until you you've gone through it like the you know the fifth time all of a sudden oh my gosh there's a little bit more to this than i ever thought yeah exactly exactly that's well, fantastic and, and i still notice to this day decks that i've delivered multiple times and i'm going through it and i'm like i missed a word here you know i've been staring at this slide <laughs> I don't know totally. how many times and I, I I missed in or the or some silly thing where yeah. you don't notice it or, or I use this word instead of that word. They're very similar to each other, but they're not the same. Right. You know, and it's like, oh, right. how did I not catch that? And then right. hopefully you remember to go fix it. Sometimes you do, sometimes you yeah. don't. <laughs> or you, uh, I don't I don't think I did this. Uh, I Hopefully I don't, but maybe I should go back to some of my slide decks. I always wonder if like, if I take a look at some of these slide decks, have I been giving recommendations that nowadays are not, are not a good thing right I, i'd hate to go back to a slide deck oh no pointer exceptions just hide those you don't have to tell anyone <laughs> about them <laughs> i would be horrified if i see that in a slide deck. just somewhere. wrap it and rethrow it it's fine that's right there's nothing you can do about it anyway <laughs> that's right that's for qa well, not exactly, my problem. exactly well i i think i think neil is the one we were getting apparently this is the neil recap show he was on that's last right. week but I'm pretty sure he's the one who told me once that today's best practices are tomorrow's anti-patterns. You know, so there's, there's right. some truth to that. But uh, the Goose of Wild says, hi. Hello, the Goose of Wild. How are you? I'm, I'm getting better at checking Hello. chat as we do this. And yeah. I have to admit, I love people's sort of, I guess, Twitch handles. You know, it's, it's funny to see what people come up with. Mine is weird as well, but, but it has to be, right? Because otherwise, mm -hmm. it's all the good ones are taken. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just work here. But so it's, uh, let's see here. It's, it's. We're right in the middle of the holiday season here, right? So we're coming mm -hmm. up on the New Year's. How has your holiday been? What, what have you guys been up to? What have you been doing? Nothing, I assume it's just, been fairly low-key. You know, pandemic. Um, I've tried about just every wine there is out there. Fantastic. Uh, so it's, <laughs> that part's been great. Yeah, it's just uh, not that I'm abusing it or anything, but, you know, why not? <laughs> Let's have wine with dinner every or uh, every dinner. <laughs> I mean, it's got to be drunk, right? It's it's made to be drunk, and that's fine. That's right. It's, yeah. it's, 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 that's what it's there for. But Yeah, but you know what? One of the things that uh, uh, I'm, I'm just going to talk about the positives of the pandemic. Now, I'm no... Um, uh, shoot, the name just uh, uh, Apple on Oh Newton. Yeah, Isaac Newton. So Isaac Newton was um, uh, caught up in the Black Plague. And that was, okay. that was the pandemic during his time. And, um, you know, much of, you know, what we benefit from Isaac Newton uh, was because of the Black Plague, it kind of sheltered him in place. And uh, he spent uh, all his time uh, studying. So uh, when I saw that, I'm like, Oh, that's kind of intriguing. I'm no Isaac Newton, I'm, I'm fully aware of that. Uh, but we could certainly better ourselves uh, during this time. So um, I've been enjoying just, you know, some of the things that I've learned during the pandemic as well. And just, you know, making sure I read up and keep up uh, it's a great opportunity. And uh, as you and I know, it's sometimes hard to pick up new ideas, new right. technologies. We're on the road, all that. Right. And uh, we're on a plane or we're in an airport and we're listening to to screaming and uh, United Airlines. And, and that's just in the lounge. So <laughs> that, that's just in the lounge. Yeah. Well, it's been great like that. So as far as that goes, I think that's uh, that's been an excellent benefit as far as the pandemic goes. Yeah, I, I don't miss hundreds of hours on airplanes. I really don't. I mean, I, I'm looking forward to going places at some point in sometime yeah. i don't know if it's 2021 or 2022 but uh you know so i think the goose of well just gave us a good a, a good stream we'll have to create here wine and code i like that or whiskey and code i, I could get behind <laughs> both of those yeah i don't know it's 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 kind of weird i i know some people who've done that i know some people who uh enjoy marijuana just before they code and mm. even music. And I am probably the most bland, boring person uh, when it comes to coding. I can't do either of those. I can't listen to music. Really? I have a hard time listening to podcasts while I code because it all always seems I have like two streams of thought. That one's just going to draw me away from it. Sure. I don't do any of that. I need complete silence. 
uh, you know, when I do uh, any kind of coding. I don't know what you're like. Well, so it, it makes me think of the, the first book I wrote, I actually wrote a fair amount of it while I had West Wing reruns on in the background. Wow. And it just kind of put me in the right zone because I'd already seen them all. And so it wasn't like I needed to really focus on it, but just kind of having that conversation in the background was just enough to sort of distract oh, yeah, that active that portion of my brain. And then I could just crank right. away on, on putting prose on the page. Yeah, I do miss going like to a cafe uh, or sure. a restaurant doing work. That white noise is absolutely great. Just the the chatter that goes on in the background. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I, I miss restaurants. It's so funny. I, I keep making this comment, I think, on almost every stream. But we watch like an old TV show, an old movie, and you're like, oh, my God, I can't believe people used to be able to smoke on an airplane. And now it's... <laughs> my God, those people are all right next to each other and they're not wearing masks. What, what is wrong with these people? You know, and it's just, it's amazing how our, our, you know, sphere has already changed to, to say the, yeah. the least, but. Uh, oh, that, that happens a lot in social media. Someone, uh, someone was posting a picture uh, of, you know, and it's people that we hang out with uh, on our tech community. And someone had posted a picture from 2019. Uh, and I think they even mentioned it as well, but someone didn't see that. Uh, but it's amazing how fastly we get triggered right. by people's pictures. Right. And they're like all together, hey, everybody. And uh, they're like, why aren't you wearing a mask? Well, exactly. for one, it was 2019. <laughs> you know, it, it's funny because on the one hand, it wasn't that long ago, but it feels yeah. like an oh, eternity. It's just, it's yeah. crazy to me how long the last 10, 11 months have felt. You know, I, I joke like every week feels like it's a month. Every month feels like it's a year. And yeah, I don't, I don't know why. I'm not sure what, what the difference is, honestly, but, um, you know, there's clearly something there. But yeah, I, I was looking forward to 2021 until I, I saw this tweet from J.P. McDade that said, <laughs> January 1st, 2021, we did it, guys! The off year is behind us! August 4th, 2021, the snake wolves have taken Illinois. Here's what that <laughs> means for the Ohio volcano refugees. And and so that gave me some pause that, that maybe, just maybe, we shouldn't be super duper excited about 2021 or 2020, the sequel. At least I hope mm -hmm. that's not what it is. But, uh, you know, who knows? Who knows? Any, anything's yeah. possible. But do you have yeah. big plans for, for New Year's, which I guess is coming up, right? No. I, no yeah. yeah. I, I'm past I'm that point in my life. Best. You know, That's right. Just hope for the best. Prepare for the worst, but hope for the best. <laughs> got got enough got enough flour and yeast laid in for the the next next century. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, just uh, uh, I'm I'm hoping for like, uh, and I guess uh, uh, Dr. Fauci had uh, talked about like the uh, vaccine is going to be uh, more generally available uh, in April. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, that's what's I interesting. I kind of enjoyed I, staying at home and not flying all that much. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I don't torn. Know how to deal with it. I'm torn. I mean, I I am looking forward to some normalcy. To be clear, I just yeah. am not entirely certain how long it's going to take for that to all work itself out in terms of timing and events starting up again. You know, who's going to be ready to have events or who's going to feel comfortable? I mean, that the, the first few times is going to be a little like nervous, right? You're going to be like gun shy. I think when when the first time you go eat in a restaurant when this is over, yeah. you know, indoors, it's it's going to be yeah. a little. Well, it strange. depends on the restaurant. Like one of the things True. that I'm not going to miss is like. Uh, like, I don't mind eating at home, but just doing the dishes is just like absolutely horrible. And it's just like, <laughs> I'm always doing dishes and it sucks. And it's just like, I, you know, I just want to go back, hang out with you and, right. you know, and uh, we the go dishes to just a restaurant disappear, right? Somebody else's and job. The dishes just disappear. Yeah. And uh, we just eat great food and, right. and, um, you know, we have waiters and uh, again, and stuff like that, that we could share an experience with food. And I think I miss that probably the most like right. uh and so nate and i you know during a, a conference uh and most conferences are like that where you know you have a certain group of people that you enjoy their company and you go to a a good restaurant to try something different or yep. try something local uh i miss that stuff oh, i miss not so doing much. dishes afterwards too yeah. well my my son one of his sort of tasks around the house is to put away the dishes in the dishwasher when the dishwasher is done and he usually has a little bit of complaint about that and and i made the comment to him like well we don't have to feed you if you'd prefer to not unload <laughs> the right. dishwasher. I mean, that's why I th I think this happened to me in April. I made some comment about why do we have so many dishes? And my wife just stared at me and I'm like, oh, right, 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 right. Forgot we're cooking everything now. We're not really going out at all. You know, I mean, we, yeah. we do takeout once a week usually to help support our local restaurants. But it's very different than, than what we used to do for sure. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, and what gets me is the amount of styrofoam and plastic that I've been using. I'm usually I usually yeah. try to keep an eye on that, but that's just tough right now too. Oh, agreed. Yep. Agreed. 
Yeah, yep. Goose of Wild, I agree with you. I, I, I do think the aliens may still happen. I mean, I don't know what's going on with these monoliths that keep showing up. And not, not the yeah, technical monoliths, you know but the Those actual mon the monoliths. monoliths. And, and why do we have a Space Force now? And so I've been oh. like linking those two together. At first, mm -hmm. I'm like Space Force. Mm -hmm. That just sounds like the something Guardians, to use military money right? for. But then the monolith started coming up. And, and I'm like, like, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are we preparing for something? What's going on? And then, and then uh, <laughs> the gentleman in Israel who I can't remember what his former role was, but, but he oh, yeah, yeah. said, yep, there are aliens. They just don't want to talk to us right now because they know we can't handle it. And it's like, oh, Mark, checks out. I don't know. What was the... Um, it was uh it was the original war of the worlds right where and hopefully i don't give an ending but you know what people you've had like 80 years to uh, catch up on yeah this, so. spoiler alert sorry <laughs> there's a statute of limitations on that <laughs> but it, yeah but one of the greatest things especially during a pandemic like if aliens come over now they're toast oh uh, you know we've got this coronavirus that right. will just like right <laughs> yeah, you don't you don't want to eradicate us, all sure. aliens Exactly, yeah, exactly. You don't want to be near us at all. <laughs> oh, man, that's good times. That's good times. Man. <laughs> that's right. So what, what have you been doing here during the pandemic to sort of keep yourself busy? Have you been streaming anything? Has it been binge watching stuff? What, what, what have you been doing to try to keep your no, sanity? No, I think it's, uh, uh, it's actually just been uh, programming. Okay. Uh, been uh, trying to prep for uh, 2021 uh scala 3 is uh going to come out eventually uh it has a lot of uh features that uh uh come along with it uh i've got a uh, presentation for or a class a four-hour class coming up on o'reilly next nice. year uh on scala 3 so heck yeah i've uh, been doing that i've been getting into uh some libraries within scala called cats and cats effect uh, which stands for category theory. So a bunch of nerd goodness. Um, you probably heard the term monads, monoids. Oh, yes. Uh, all those all those terms. Uh, one of them, uh, Venkat Subramanian was giving a talk on, mon <laughs> on monads. And uh, I walk in just to see his take on it. And uh, he's like, excuse me, what are you doing here? And he, he points to me and <laughs> all the audience looks back at me. And I'm like, uh, doctor, my uh, my monads are killing me. Can you do something about it? And the audience just started laughing, and and Venkat couldn't talk for <laughs> what seemed awesome. like a good minute. But uh, yeah, everyone had a because they they sound like something a doctor should take care right. of. Oh, right. My monads, man, these, man they're killing these me. Monads. Oh, <laughs> That's God. right. Or monads. <laughs> I, I, think, I, I think it's a rule that every every BCAC I do have to mention Venkat. I think I don't know why, um, but it seems like he comes up a lot. This oh, is he fascinating does. to me. Yeah. Yeah, he you does. know, I, I had a fire alarm going off a couple of weeks ago, and I'm pretty sure he was involved. So <laughs> that's right. Yeah, he knows how to start fires. Did did you pick up any new habits or anything during pandemic times that you want to continue? No, into? just bad habits. Just bad habits have to try to get rid of after we're yeah, that, that after wine a, a day keeps the the monads away. That's right. <laughs> uh, I think one of the things is like, as far as flying goes, I think my stress levels have gone way down. Oh, sure. I think, I think flying adds to a lot of that stress. And uh, if I do fly again, gosh, I don't know what to do. I've been thinking a lot about that, but I think I've benefited a lot for not flying. Sure. And well, uh, I'm, so I'm out of practice. That's the thing. The first time I go back to the airport and be like, how does this work? What do I do? I need to, to go completely naked or can I just leave my boxers on? You know, yeah, it's, it's yeah, going to yeah. be like that. But I think we put up with a lot. Like we put up a lot of abuse from from airlines and the TSA as well. Yes. I don't miss the TSA no. at all. And uh, yeah. Well, I, I used to say that with when I switched to this job, I got all my commute stress in macro doses because I didn't have that micro dose of stress every morning and evening going into the office mm -hmm. and back home. I just got big dollops of it when uh, your flight has been delayed yet again, or your flight has been yeah. canceled or we're oversold. And you know, all those wonderful things that happen when you travel a and lot. And it happens in the evening. That's, that's the most stressful of course. Like when you're just absolutely trying to get home. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, I, I've, I've reflected on this before. A lot of people look at the amount of travel that we do and they're like, oh my God, that must be so much fun. Because for most people, travel means vacation. It means you're going somewhere yeah. warm or you're going to visit friends, relatives, you're going to do something enjoyable. And for us, it means we're going to go sit in a windowless conference room for eight hours 
you know, so right. it's, it's never work. seen the sunlight. Yeah. Right. And while we do get to go to some very cool places, eat at some good restaurants, you know, meet some very amazing people, you know, there's a cost to that in terms of the amount of time spent in the air. Although app in the air actually just sent me a, a notification. See how many hours you spent in the air this year. I'm like, nope, don't have to worry about that. Right. You know what? I think I'm still paying for a trip it. <laughs> now that you mentioned it, I think I need to go back and uh, do some cancellations on there. Well, I mean, eventually it's going to be useful again. I'm sure. I'm sure. So a oh, one a day hides a semicolon. Yes, it does. Uh, Thailand, Lenter, Peckham. Yeah, I just, it is tough. I agree. I mean, there's there's places yeah. that, that normally I would have been to two or three times at least this year. I, I look back at my, my original travel schedule for the year, and man, I had some yeah. cool locations on there. And, right. you know, what are you going to well, do? Well. I mean, it, it's yep. it's a hopefully once in a generation thing, right? Like, this won't happen again, I hope. I mean, fingers uh, crossed. Knock on wood. Yeah. Knock on wood. There we go. The problem is you just said it. Yeah. And so... That's right. It's, it's the announcer's curse. We did talk about that in, in our prep today. That, you know, you, whenever you watch sports, as soon as the announcer says, uh, you know, he's not, never missed inside of 47 yards. And then sure enough, the kicker's going to miss on the very next play. That's how it works. You know, Tom Brady's <laughs> right. never been intercepted in the fourth quarter. Oh, there we go. Now it is. <laughs> <There we> go. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't I've, either. I've seen some different things of, uh, you know, this could be something that may occur often. Who knows? And, you know, maybe masks are just going to be just a general thing that we wear. I don't know. I don't know what life is going to be like when we get back to it. What do you think about uh, office buildings? Ooh, yeah. I, I don't, this is going to hasten the work remotely revolution for, for some job functions, obviously not for all, but I would not want to be in commercial real estate right now. You know, and I, I think, yeah. I think Dale and I were talking about this. I can't remember if it was on BCAC or if it was, was on our, our weekly uh, touch point call, mm -hmm. but I think it is going to have a pretty interesting set of ramifications for downtowns. You know, I think about most downtowns function where they're very busy during the day and then they roll to sidewalks in the evening. There's a lot of restaurants. There's a lot of shops that rely on that foot traffic. What happens yeah. when, even if it's only 30, 40% of those people aren't coming downtown anymore, you know, and right. I think there's a lot of folks who, well, first and foremost, a lot of companies had this forcing function of the pandemic to break through the sort of hesitance they may have had about remote, remote work. So that's gone. You've now got yeah. a year and a half, basically, by the time this is over of it works, you know, or we've worked out all the kinks. And I think you're going to have a lot of people who are like, you know, I'm pretty good with this routine now that I've been doing it for a year and a half. And yeah. I actually was, was talking with a friend of mine last week, and they have certain employees who have physically moved now. They're yes. still employees, but they don't live in the Twin Cities area anymore. A lot of uh, <clears throat> a lot of people who I follow on Twitter have just moved out of San Francisco. Right, right. Why do I need to be here? Yeah. yeah. So I think that's going to have a really interesting impact on some of these cities. What happens when more of that sort of talent starts moving around or people like, you know, I don't really want a two hour commute or I don't really want to pay four thousand dollars a month for a studio apartment you know, I'd rather use that money on a right. house or something. And so I think you're going to see sure. some really interesting ramifications from that. But I, I can't imagine how we're going to go back to the way it was. You know, I, yeah. I think there'll still be offices, there'll still be certain functions where people for better or worse feel like you have to do it in person. But I think a lot of us when this is over, it's going to be yeah, I'm not coming in every day, it might be one day a week, it might be one week a month or something. But you know, it's it's, I just can't see it returning to the way it yeah. was, you know, in mass yeah. anyway, but and I don't know how people do it with uh, kids in like large metropolitan areas with a very small square footage where they're right. paying that $4,000 a month. Um, you know, it's nice to have that space and move to wherever you want to. Right. Now, one of the things I know uh, Facebook was cutting some salaries mm. just because they didn't have to pay that much. Uh, how big is a cut? Is a question yeah. I, I don't know the answer to. That, that seems rather short-sighted personally, but you know, to each yeah. own. Although, uh, you know, I remember when I came out of college, I had some friends that get into consulting and they would, their salary would be based on the location of their home address. And so since they were on the road all the time, a lot of them didn't have a home per se, they'd have what they would mm. refer to as like a crash pad. And so they right. would like four or five of them would rent an apartment in some high end area like New York or wherever. And so look, I've got this, this zip code that dictates I get the higher salary, but then I'm only there two or three nights a month, basically. And the rest yeah. of the time I'm in corporate housing as I'm flying to different client sites. So 
you know, I can see where they might try to push back. And I know that right now, at least in the U.S., there's some arguments around states in terms of taxation. Do we tax you where your office is or do we tax you based on where you are, which a lot of people live in Connecticut or New Jersey and commute into New York? Well, they're they're working right. from home. Who gets to tax them? Yeah, there's going to be some interesting fights over that. But yeah, yeah. That'd be, yep. Yeah. So I, I think, you know, as, as Goose of Wild says here, you know, his company has, has had that issue or her company, I guess I'm not sure what the gender is on that, that name. You know, it, it has forced people to, to think about this and to move in a different direction. And I think that's a huge positive, quite frankly. Yep. But, you know. So let's, uh, let's discuss code quality as, as we are re more remote. Does code quality suffer or does it become better? And uh, do you, uh, is it easier or even harder, like if someone's code quality isn't up to par, uh, to say remotely, don't do that. Mm. <laughs> we haven't used go-to statements since the 80s <laughs> <right>? <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> uh, like we miss some of that, you know, human, you know, let's do this, let's don't do that. Or is it not even an argument just because sure. Zoom meetings are so easy? Uh, there are... Um, I've noticed a few apps that I can't really remember now, but uh, people have been announcing, you know, pairing apps and, and team group apps where they could program together. Mm -hmm. um, is this probably just a, you know, moot argument? Yeah, I, I think a lot of it is is relatively moot. I don't think those problems are all that much different when we're in a remote situation. You still have to have the conversation with somebody and you still have to instruct them, guide them, mentor them. Right. You know, I yep. it, it is... I mean, we've done remote pairing for years. I mean, that's nothing new from from my organization standpoint. It's more widely spread, and there's a lot of organizations, you know, as the Goose of Wild said, where hey, you know, we were all in the office, couldn't do remote work. Now we do remote work. You know, I remember mm -hmm. talking to a friend about mine, a friend we both know, and he said he had been trying to do remote work, and his company's like, absolutely not. And they said, well, maybe we'll give you one day a week. And now that wow. they're this deep in a pandemic, they they went back to them and said, listen, if you want to work from home all the time when this is over, that's fine. You know, because I think it took yeah. time for companies to get comfortable with it, you know? And so right. it, it, there is that learning curve. There is, okay, <clears throat> what technology works best for us? You know, do we turn the cameras on or not? And this, this has been one of the interesting things for me teaching grad students. You know, we got about half a semester in in the spring before we went remote. And so I'd met all those students in person and... I think most of them turned their cameras on, if I remember right. I, I I guess I'd have to go back into my memory banks. But this semester, I got a group of students I'd never met before in person. And I realized <laughs> that this group is going to graduate from our program having spent one and a half of four semesters in person. Because I, there's no way we're going back in person in the spring. So, right. you know, what what is that change? And the hard part for me is they tend to keep their cameras off unless they're speaking. And yeah. it's a little weird to teach to a group of squares, you know, black squares on a, on a monitor, yeah. but you know, there are I always joke that I was, bo I was uh, born and raised an only child. So that doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> you see, I'm an only child too. So it's like, okay, <laughs> I can entertain myself, you know? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I would just look in the mirror and say, do you want to play Han Solo action figure today? And that was, I get like, to beat Chewbacca. <laughs> I get to beat Chewbacca. <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. So Goose of Wild says that he's seen some people who maybe getting a bit more relaxed on PRs. Uh, no end of questions. That's great. Already the mindset they know mm -hmm. everything working from home. That's that's a great point. It, it can be a lot more challenging to sort of offer some of that advice to people where you might be able to kind of say, hey, let's go get a cup of coffee and have that conversation and maybe more of a relaxed environment. You know, I, I it's very clear we miss that adjacent possible <laughs> when we're remote on zoom you know that bumping into somebody in the hallway while you're headed to lunch or whatever and just kind of the random oh yeah you worked on a problem like this cool let's let's why don't we touch base next week and and compare notes you know we don't we kind of miss out on that yeah totally. so i'm curious again I, I think it's gonna be fascinating to see what this looks like in a year you know what what yeah. is the new normal because it, it's not going to be the same as it was before i don't think i don't yeah. see how it can you know? yeah wow. some of the um uh, some of the speakers I'm I'm kind of jealous for because they live, they live further and further out. Like they have farms now. Right. Uh, I know one of the Java luminaries has like uh, lives in uh, on Crete on an island. Yes. Yes. And well, he's been there a long time though. Yeah. That's not oh, new yes, for him. Okay. I think so. Okay. If, if yeah. we're thinking of the same person, which I'm guessing. I we think are. so. But yeah, you know, I'll I'll see stories like that and just like wow. <laughs> 
well, I kind of want to do that. <laughs> I don't, you know, maybe city centers, city centers are great because they have hospitals and right, stuff. So in right. case you get into a little bit of a trouble, that's, that's really nice to have around, but you know, yes. to not necessarily be a part of, you know, where traffic is and, you know, stuff like that just sounds like well there are options and still get work done yeah there are options that didn't exist 10 years ago 20 years ago i mean we've, we've talked about this before but if this pandemic had hit 10 years ago 20 years yeah. ago totally nope. different outcomes you know in terms I, of we wouldn't be able to abide by anything no no we, it, we'd have to go out it yeah. would just be maddening i think it'd be much yeah. worse frankly you know i think especially even when it comes to educating our kids you know it's, it's the technology just wasn't there and although i mean there's arguments that this is sort of a lost year and uh, there's probably some truth to that although lost year compared to what and it's lost for everybody uh, you, know what? Yeah. you know but i don't know i i like the jokes like i like the 2020 jokes and just like oh but we're gonna have this anyway yeah. and i'd rather have it with this technological advancement that we're able to do zoom calls, we're able to do remote work. And even just like the rush to a vaccine right. is just on a scientific technological level has just been what we work this fast to, you know, and not me, you know, I shouldn't even say we, it's <laughs> right, them. Like right. it's just, it's the Royal we, it's the, it's a Royal we look what we did, but uh, yeah, that's just amazing. Like I'm, I'm glad a, you know, well, I'm not glad a pandemic hit, but no, you know, I'm glad the pandemic you. hit when it did. Well, uh, and, just and because we're more advanced for it. That, that's a great point. I, although I do think what's interesting, or what has given me some amount of comfort, is these vaccines have been around for a while. I mean, scientists have been working on this type of of virus for almost sure. 20 years, and yeah. my understanding is once they got the genetic sequence back in January, they're like, oh yeah, we got this. You know that right. Like, from people who do this for a living, I saw some threads and whatnot about it saying, listen, most of the time isn't spent on creating the vaccine or even the clinical trials. It's begging for funding and finding a company that will pay for it and all that, that it's not the actual creating of the vaccine or even the testing of it. That's the real time sink. And oh, so that's it's, interesting. It's interesting to know, know you know, what, what goes into this, you know, but I'm sure it's, it's the same thing. I, I've never worked on that. That's not my space. I've never worked in medical software. So, you know, how would we have any connection to that? But it is, it is interesting to see what what goes into it in these sort of time frames but uh, yeah totally so goose and wild has some interesting comments here around sort of all-day group chats you know i think that's what's interesting is to see how companies are recreating the water cooler and that hop in hop out in slack yeah. or similar tools you know i do think that's one of the challenges is is that and and i i think one of the things i've had to reflect on is making sure you're checking in on on folks like you know you've got a partner i've got a partner i've got a kid so I'm around people all the time. And then I'm like, oh yeah, I've got a couple of teammates who are single, you know, and it's like, you got to remind oh, yourself to reach out and health. just, yeah, yeah, how you doing? How's yeah. it going? And, and having kind of those touch points is, is helpful too. Sometimes we forget about that, but. No, that raises a good point. Cause you know, you would have that in a work environment right. as well. Like, you know, someone who's going through a tough time, someone who went through a divorce or something like right. that, you would just say everything going okay. Right. Which sometimes it was just like, you know, make sure to that, we're human and we're just like, Hey, right. yeah, yeah, let's check. How are you doing? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so now I, that's a lot harder. Yeah. So you use the end of the year here as a good excuse to reach out to somebody you haven't touched, touch base with in a few months and just check in see how they're doing and, you know, catch up a little bit. Cause it, it's easy to forget that, you know, it's easy just to kind of move on. But yeah. Yeah. It... <clears throat> so I'm, I'm always curious, is there, when you're in a hotel and you're flipping through channels, if, if that's a thing that you feel like doing some night, is there a movie? I don't touch that thing, man. That I, remote is disgusting, man. I mean, I, I hear you. I I always look for the apps. So, so some hotels have the TV app you can use, and I forget the name of it. But you you basically punch in a code, and then now you can control the TV from your phone, which is what? super. Oh, yeah, you okay. haven't seen that? That's, I mean, it, it's not no, every hotel. It's not even every hotel in the same brand, which I've is frustrating. I've assumed that everything is still like the same hotel menu the old hotel menu that was just really well, hard to navigate. And so one of the advantages of this app is I think for like 99 cents a year, or some ridiculously low amount of money, you could upgrade to the view that would show you the television schedule, which uh -huh. is really helpful when you're in some random hotel in some random city. And you're like, I just want to watch this sports event, but I don't know what time it comes on in this time zone or whatever. And you're like, scroll, scroll, scroll. Oh, there it is. Click. And then on it is. Wow. But assuming, you know, well, maybe Dawn, messes with the remote so you don't have to touch it like a good germaphobe is there a movie that you stumble across that you're like 
I have to watch this now. I'm in. Like once you see it, doesn't matter whether it's five minutes in or there's only five minutes left. You're like, yep, I'm sitting down. Stop everything. I'm watching this movie. Uh, it would probably be, and these assuming are just going to be movies that I've uh, already watched and, and it brings me joy and I'm going to watch it regardless. Uh, I would say that would have to either be, uh, any of the star Wars films. I usually end up just getting caught at anyway, even the prequels, not the new ones. I'm okay, one of thank those, you. Thank oh, you. I'm one of those old people that's just sure. like, I, I don't think those are canon, those last well, three movies. Well, hang on. Are we and, talking the prequels or are we talking the sequels? So prequels. And so the prequels, uh, yeah, I've pretty much flushed from my memory, especially the first one. We can all I, agree that I was an know, abomination. But you know what? I, I, I went ahead and I put uh, episode three ahead of Return of the Jedi. I'm sorry, I think what? It is. Yes. You're kidding I, I, me. I think episode three is like a, is like a Greek tragedy like uh, uh, everything that was part of a, any kind of Greek tragedy or any kind of Shakespearean tragedy okay. is episode three. I mean, there are so wow. many, the hero must fall, which is all a part of a, sure. of a Greek tragedy. Sure. And, and it has every element to that. So episode three uh, is better than Return of the Jedi. Wow. But New Hope and uh, Empire Strikes Back are at the top. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and how do you so, feel about the but, sequels? Nah, don't care I, about like I any of them, like Rogue them. One or any of those. What, what about the Although Mandalorian? One, yes, I don't. I don't consider that like a sequel because it's not necessarily Fair a point. to anything. Fair point. Part yeah. of the expanded universe. Yeah. So Rogue One is is just okay. masterful. It's just great. Just beautiful. I love uh, that one. I'm I'm enjoying the Mandalorian a great deal. Mandalorian is great as yes. well. Yes, I, I love oh. our, I love our little. He's always going to be Baby Yoda to me. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I know I, he has uh, a name now, but yeah. Someone's really making fun of the dude that I saw it on YouTube <laughs> and he cried uh, when, uh, when the main hero, I'm not going to give it away. I'm not going to be a jerk just in case some of you haven't seen it, but when the main hero arrives uh, in Mandalorian, he just started crying. I understand. <laughs> and people understand. were making fun of him and I'm yeah. like, Oh man, I don't know. That's See, not right. I mean, you know, that hero means a lot to a lot of people. <laughs> You know, it, it's don't make fun of the guy for my, it. My problem right now with with things like the Mandalorian is there's not enough of it. You know, so you and I are of an age when a, a show, a season was going to be like 22 to 25 episodes. They were going to be an hour long. And that's yeah. the way it was going to be. And then These HBO are expensive to make though. Oh, hundred percent. You know, and then HBO comes along and is like, you know what? Or the BBC, the BBC probably ultimately started this. A season is however many episodes we feel like making. And we are not going to be bound by your 60 minute, 45 minute, 22 sure. minute. None of that's, that's out the great. window. You know, like if you ever watch Luther, it's like some episodes are, are 43 minutes. Some episodes are an hour and 10 and you're just like, what? Yeah, so yeah. I, I do appreciate that they're breaking free from those constraints a bit, although I could use me some more Mandalorian. You know, if another five or ten episodes were going to come along, I, I'd, I'd happily but pay more to the Disney franchise for that. For, for something that uh, that uh, you've always really enjoyed and, and told others about, and that would be Game of Thrones. Yes. That perplexes me because yes. like, every season before eight was just, maybe seven was a little bit lagging, but uh, definitely one through six has been like really excellent 100%. in their storytelling. And they had no reason to no. rush it right. at all. Yeah. We were throwing money at them. Like, right. we're just like, right. just keep it up. Just yeah. just give us what we need. We're addicts. <laughs> we're just oh, like, 100%. Like, yeah. Please, sir, and, take my money. And they take rushed it my for like money. no reason yeah. at all. Yeah, yeah I, that would really perplexes me because I, I agree with you. I feel like the last season of Game of Thrones was rushed. You know, that we went from this very, maybe too methodical of a, of a timing to, oh, you can now get from one part of this universe to another part of this universe in five minutes. Like, it's just around right. the corner. And and I I do think they didn't quite build enough into that the way they could have or should have. But yeah. by the same token, you know, you, you always want to leave them wanting more as opposed to, oh, that, that went a season too long. So yeah. I can see where they maybe had some concerns. Because I guess Lost, that ended up uh, something that ended up with uh, Lost. I never watched Lost, but from what I understand... Uh, a lot of viewers were just like, I'm exhausted. I'm, I'm going to move on. I think the problem with Lost is they didn't know how popular it was going to be, and they hadn't really thought through what is the end game here. Yeah. And when you look at a show, like like The Wire to me stands out as one of the best 
all time sort of you know, good TV ending. cinema, a fantastic. Well, uh, it, it, it certainly is better than the Sopranos ending. <laughs> Let's put it that sure. way. Um, but that was thought out as five seasons. You know, there was a very right. deliberate arc there. And, and I think what certainly helped Game of Thrones is they had a finish line in mind. You know, they weren't just sort of, let's just see where the story takes us. Like that that was apparently part of even green lighting the series is how do you finish it? Because we everybody knew that the books weren't finished yet. So right. what does that look like? But yeah, I do definitely think they they rushed it, which is unfortunate. But uh, I still, I yeah. have every intention of going back through and watching it again here, probably here over the winter months, because it finally snowed here in Minnesota. I, I made the mistake of telling Neil last week that it was raining in Minnesota and that we had no snow cover. And much as the announcer's curse, I think it was a day or two yes, later right. that it's snowed. Right. You just called upon it. I did, I did. And yep. to make things even more enjoyable, my snowblower is not functioning. In fact, our local uh, repair shop literally came today to pick it up because anybody who's ever had small engine repair knows that they're always a month out. It doesn't matter what season it yeah. is. Wow. So, you know, and that's, that's the joy of, of living in, in the Midwest. I live in, in the, the Southwest U S so I have this shovel thing and that's good enough. And you're like, what is this? Like I use it three times a year and, and wow. forget where it is half the time. Yeah. We, we don't, we don't have that here. It's uh, <laughs> yeah. So it's one thing um, uh, that we uh, discussed uh, uh, on the tour um, and uh, I'll tie it back into Star Wars, uh, but how it all we're comes back to Star Wars. It was, yeah, but how we're how we're manipulated, uh, and one of the examples was uh, um, an an NPR episode that I was listening to about what Netflix does as far as big data, how it scrapes right. uh, our viewing habits and cultivates a show out of it. And uh, Netflix created House of Cards like that because right. at the time we like, or at the time we like Kevin Spacey, kind of fell out of favor. I don't know if you know that. Uh, yeah, just a little. Uh, just yeah. a little. <laughs> uh, David Pincer as a uh, producer, and it's just like, man, people really like this. Let's make a show. Right. Just like based on that, and just pure human <laughs> human manipulation. Um, and I'm not complaining, but Mandalorian is made for Gen Xers. Mm. And sure, millennials and younger and maybe even some some baby boomers uh, would appreciate it. Uh, but I think right now, as far as generations go, I think we're we're getting more of the money sure. uh, that will soon fade. And the millennials will then, uh, you know, well, the millennials dictate are bigger. what we've, we've always we've always been this little generation in between two big generations. So no one's yeah, ever really cared true. about yeah. us. Yep. Yep. Uh, but soon media, music, and everything. I think music's already in the uh, millennial sphere. I oh, think 100%. Uh, that's already left. Yeah, I, I realized uh, years I was ago you about that. that I was no yeah, longer relevant to pop culture. I realized that years yeah. ago. So it's, it's fine. <laughs> but what's kind of interesting, and I'll, I'll probably find a way to tie it all in together. I was actually at uh, the Minneapolis airport. Yeah. And I'm walking My through that airport. main shopping area. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just 80s music. And I, sure. I realized malls as well there's just 80s music and uh and i was thinking about it and i was just thinking about how like our generation right now probably does have you know kind of most of the wealth right now as far as like you know being able to spend money and so they're playing music to bring you in and right. they were playing the, uh, i think in minneapolis airport it was the outfield and i'm okay. like wow that this kind of takes me you know this is kind of nice that they're playing this kind of music and i'm like i'm being manipulated aren't i <laughs> it's, it's they are intentionally playing this music to bring me in well yeah. it's 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 kind of scary when you you watch a movie or a tv show or something and you do the math and you realize oh that's 20 years old or 25 years old or 30 years old we watched i think it was love actually over the like last week uh -huh. oh and right yeah the kid who you know plays the young lad in that movie of course is no longer a young lad and you start doing the math and you're like oh that person's oh, now, yeah. you know, 35 years old or whatever it is. And, and you start to kind yes. of look at that and you go, huh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah we're getting old. You know, which my beats the alternatives. Was, yeah, my cousin was uh, tweeting that uh, uh, or not, or sending messages on that. So Demi Moore right now is the same age that Angela Lansbury was whenever she started Murder, She Wrote. No. That's nuts, isn't it? Oh, my God. <laughs> So Keanu Reeves, is, uh, Keanu Reeves is the same age as Morgan Freeman was when he started shooting Shawshank Redemption, both 56 years old. Yeah, I was going to say Keanu's in his 50s. We just watched one of the John Wicks, too. And when you figure, oh, he's that old doing that kind of movie, 
doesn't yeah, look Morgan a day Freeman over 35. tends to be like one of those actors that has always looked old. Sure. Like Wilford Brimley. Sure. Wilford Brimley. Uh, as a 25 year old, looked like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah as a 25 year old. Because he did Cocoon uh, yeah. fairly young, but yeah. he had already looked like he was already 80 years old. Right. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer Lopez is 51 years old, same age as Rue McClanahan was when she did Golden Girls, which is nuts. And then like three years ago, Ralph Macchio was the same age as uh, uh, Mr. Miyagi. Oh, geez. And so, yeah, it's just kind of crazy. And so I was doing a little bit of research on my own that got me really excited about it. And uh, I was looking at uh, Courtney Cox. Oh, yeah. yeah. And in four years, she will be just the same age as Andy Griffith was. No. Uh, yes. Oh when he God. did Matlock. And oh I'm my. like, what a great show that would be with Courtney Cox as Matlock. As Matlock. Like, can you imagine Courtney oh Cox God. just eating like a hot dog during lunch before she continues the court case? It would be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my money, damn it. Just, just take my money. Courtney take my Cox, money. Man. Come on, Netflix. <laughs> like Get plays, on that. That's right. Your public plays, has like, spoken. <laughs> Matlock's granddaughter or something and we have a new Matlock series oh, just be Lord. fantastic oh man yeah. well yeah. I'm glad we're not the only ones who didn't understand Lost Goose of Wild didn't understand that way either and and I think uh so Goose of Wild I think what you're talking about I, the one that kills me is when people talk about this is as far away from that as this was from that and you're like wait what or like this is further yeah, away know. from this than that was from that and you just go yeah you know this age thing is is getting there but Again, it does yeah. beat the alternatives. So yeah, it's you know, true. There are there yeah. are worse things. We but can then, deal with. yeah. So coming back to Star uh, the Star Wars for the Mandalorian, uh, and I appreciate it. But Mandalorian is just pure human manipulation for Gen Xers. It's also a Western. I mean, if you really watch it, it's yeah. a Western that oh, just happens weird, to yeah. be set in outer space, but it has that same vibe to it. You know, and you can almost see it in right. the way they kind of you know come into town, ching ching ching. You know, and I mean it. it yeah, I'm, I, I don't hate it. I'm not mad at it. Like the worst yeah, for me. Like for some of the things was just like, you know, why did Boba Fett become such a badass? Like, right. the, what's the backstory behind it? Right. And the only thing that we could piece together was just like a short snippet in Empire Strikes Back <laughs> when the bounty hunters were on that ledge. Right. No disintegration. And that was it. And then we saw like IG-88, uh, you know, that tall, lanky mm -hmm. uh, robot. And we're like, wow, what does it do? Like, mm -hmm. I'm, I want to know more about that. And like every question that I had as, as a kid, as a, right. as a baby Gen Xer, Mandalorian just was just, I don't know how they thought about it, but they were like, we got to answer some of these questions right. for these Gen Xers. So let's get to it. Well, I mean, it helps that it's, <laughs> it's being produced and directed and led by, by people of our generation, plus or minus. Yeah. And you know, they yeah. have the same questions we did. You know, they grew up with this. I think that's why it's so powerful. You know, yeah. and thank goodness it's gotten that voice because I, I have to tell you, after the prequels, I was pretty depressed at where the Star Wars universe was left. And then to see what's happened now, I, I'm, we're in a pretty good place. You know, give me more, please. So, yeah, I'm, I saw some of the social social media. Who's the uh, who's the director? Uh, I don't know why I keep forgetting his name uh, for Mandalorian. Oh, John Favreau. Uh, John Favreau. Yeah. Uh, that there's actually uh, several directors, you know, Bryce. Um, oh, right. You yeah. know, the Howard. uh I can see your face on Bryce something, Dallas Howard, Bryce Dallas Howard. And, mm -hmm. you know, the, the other guy who was in Ragnarok, whose name I can never pronounce, but love, you know, love yeah. his work. So, I mean, there's some fantastic talent involved. Yeah. Oh, I, uh, during the holidays, I was watching Elf. Oh, yeah. And, and the secretary, the, the person who plays the secretary in Elf uh, happens to be the one that uh, uh, takes care of uh, Baby Yoda on Tatooine. Oh, I never even caught that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I caught that this, uh, you know, cause I was watching elf, which I think, and I know we're going to run out of time here. Oh, it's fine. Well, we can I, go long. This is like the BBC. Elf, we'll, yeah. we'll end it when we feel That's like ending right. it. We I can mean, end whenever we the want. Goose to. Of Wild seems to be loving uh, this. So I'm, I'm, I'm here for, for uh, them. But I think elf, uh, I mean, that was also John Favreau. Mm -hmm. That was just a great movie. Yeah. And uh, I learned that Will Ferrell and John Favreau don't get along, so you'll never see an really? L2. Not that, that we need one anyway. No. Like some movies should just end. That's we don't need sequels. So, yeah. Huh. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll have to mention that to my wife because we watched Elf recently as well, and uh, she'll get a kick out of that. Yeah. She's like a walking IMDb. Before IMDb, yeah. her parents are phenomenal at this. You know, you can basically mm -hmm. say, Who's that? And my mother in law or father in law could just rattle off five or wow, ten things I'm like oh that person great. was in this movie and this movie and i'm like 
you know, now I just have IMDb and I just check. So they're the, the ones that if you play uh, Trivial Pursuit, they're going to get the pink pie before anybody else. They does. know the movie categories incredibly well. They've pretty much seen yeah. every movie ever. They go to all the movies, wow. even the ones that, you know, this is going to be a bad movie and they still go to it. You know, but wow. that's that's what they do. That's like their their hobby, so to speak. But wow, that is. Yeah, that is, is that is interesting. Is there a show that you wish had one more season? I guess we already kind of talked about this, but is, is there something that you're like, boy, like just one more would have really been the Outside cherry of on Game top. of Thrones? Because I think we talked about yeah. that. That should have probably probably you know, needed to be two seasons to, to think finish. about it. Yeah. Other than that one, I would probably do that one. I don't think Mandalorian is going to be that. I think, you know, I think they chose a good balance on that mm-hmm. one. Uh, the story ended, you know, when it was supposed to end. Um, no need to carry it on. So. Uh, yeah, I think, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see everything that sort of gets sprung out from that as well. You know I mean? I think some of these are springboards into other storylines and other arcs and I'm be fascinated to see what that looks like. Uh, all right. Well, let, let me throw some right lightning round questions at you here. What, what's all your, right, here we go. What's your favorite meal? What's your comfort meal? Favorite meal and comfort meal. Mm-hmm. Favorite meal, I think, would be enchiladas. Okay, okay. I'm Hispanic, so it's gonna, it's always gonna be a Mexican mm, food. Tacos. I think. Uh, so yeah, tacos are good, but you know what? Tacos are. Uh, it'd be kind of interesting, like a poll on Hispanics. I, mm-hmm. I would, I would, I would doubt that tacos is actually going to be at the top for okay. a lot of. All right, that's I think, fair. Yeah, so enchiladas, I, I think, would be, I think, would be both of them. So All right. yeah, you know, my, with my a cold s- beer. My, of course, my my teenager woke up about an hour and a half ago and I made the comment like, what are you going to have for breakfast? I mean, lunch. And then it occurred to me that we have this weird dichotomy between certain things are breakfast foods and certain things are not breakfast foods. And I'm curious why we made that delineation at breakfast. You know, we don't really talk about something being a lunch food versus a dinner food, but yet Breakfast is its own special category. Breakfast is sacred, yeah. Someone had a tweet on that, and I feel sorry because I, I just like retweeted it with a with a snark on there because they were going the opposite way. They were mm. talking about Asian culture and how Asian culture doesn't make a distinction on any of the meals. Like right. for breakfast, uh, bre- dim sum is actually mostly a breakfast food sure. uh, for um, uh, for uh, Chinese, so which I think is very interesting. And the reason I knew that is because in San Francisco, they you know in the high end hotels they cater to all you know right. all cultures. And so every time I go in, <laughs> where they're uh, where they have like a variety of food, they always have dim sum, and I'm like, sure. oh, he's putting out dim sum on the cre- on the breakfast bar. Uh, but um, I'm like, no, we need a we need to flip this around, and we need to be like hobbits and have two breakfasts. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, easy. Second like, breakfast. What are you talking yeah. about? No, yeah. let's not get rid of breakfast food. And everyone was like totally agreement. Oh, I had this. I had this. Uh, and you know, people were talking about how just there isn't a problem that can't be solved with the right. breakfast. Right. Uh, and well, it, uh, yeah. it reminds me like the first time I went to Europe, and you go to like the breakfast buffet, and in addition to oh. typical breakfast food, there's lunch meat and cheese and pickles, and you're like. I would never have thought of eating that for breakfast. And, but then I go to Europe, I'm like, yeah, what I really want is a block of cheese and some salami for breakfast. And then I come home and I go right back to eating normally. And it's like, I could definitely do that. There's nothing stopping me from having salami and cheese for breakfast other than I guess my cholesterol, but that's a future problem. So it it is interesting how we've made those distinctions. But speaking of, of breakfast or at least perk me up, coffee, espresso, or tea? Yes. Agreed. Agreed. That is the correct answer. That's you correct. win a thousand points. <laughs> so espresso in the morning. Okay. Get that initial kick. That's stronger. Uh, maybe around two, maybe you had too many carbohydrates and you're falling asleep and you still need to get stuff done. Uh, perfect for a cup of coffee. Sure. And then at night, maybe you still have something to do, or sure. maybe you just want to enjoy a video game or a movie. Uh, that's, that's when I'll nice break out the tea. Nice. So uh, a little bit of something about me. I'm, I'm kind of like Dean Martin when it comes to drinking. I do enjoy alcohol but not as much as many people think in fact like for gifts i always get I like i have so much alcohol it's not even it's not even funny because people think i drink a lot and whenever they see me i, I i'm kind of like dean martin where it shows a drink in my hand <laughs> uh but a, a little tidbit about dean martin like when he used to go on johnny carson it was never whiskey or scotch or anything like that it was apple juice interesting but he cultivated 
this character of just right. like man that, that dude's so cool he always has a drink right uh but um i actually don't drink that much so, so I, I should get drink. you apple juice the next time i see you that's right <laughs> i will take well, your finest whiskey give my friend here an apple juice okay that's right so uh, i'll have english breakfast uh, well maybe played. you know uh, if like some whiskey gets poured in that tea i'm not gonna sure. complain about no, it no I mean, it's, it's a hot toddy it's perfect for your health so. that's right yeah right. yeah so how about pie how about answer. pie or cake Oh, boy, I've stumped him here. I'm going to go with strawberry rhubarb pie. Interesting. Mode. Okay. All right. All right. I like that. Now, you live like in... Like the Simpsons says, Grandpa on the Simpsons, too much pie. That's your problem. I don't I don't know what that even means. I mean, I, I think yeah, he, all of the he above. He was telling that to Martin <laughs> Prince. He said, shut up, fatty. Too much pie. That's your problem. And that's what he told Martin Prince. Nice. I thought that was the greatest thing. And, I, and then I became self-conscious on it. I'm just like, oh, wait, Man, I think maybe pie is my problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's some truth to that. But how about, how about oceans or mountains? Do you have a preference one way or the other? I have uh, neither here in the Midwest. I just have I'd a lot of lakes. go with oceans, even okay. though I'm a mile high, same sure. as Denver. Sure. I'm, I'm definitely near a mountain and I don't, you know, go up mountains as much as you know, other people do, but sure. uh, I'm definitely an ocean person. The problem with oceans is that too many people live near it. Right. And it's tough to get to and get out. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, yeah no, I, I hear you. I, I think a lot of people, and I didn't really realize this uh, until I did a road trip. There's a lot more elevation gain in, in the U.S. than people give it credit for. You know, mm -hmm. I always sort of had this idea that if you weren't in Colorado or, you know, right along the, the sort of continental divide, like you didn't have mountains. And then you realize there's a like, pretty good chunk of the country that is at elevation but oh totally mm -hmm. yep food truck or michelin stars does it depend on who you're with yeah i think it probably depends on who you're with you know it's kind of interesting like food trucks are just good quality like I'm, yeah they are i'm trying to think if i ever be. if i ever had a bad quality food truck I don't think I've ever had a bad quality. Food I don't truck. think you can stay in business very long if, if it's not good. Right. It, it, yeah. I've seen some yeah. that were too limited maybe, or, you know, I looked at yeah. it and I thought, yeah, I'd have that once or twice, but there's no way this would become a regular part of the rotation where I'd be like, Oh, I got to seek that truck out once a month yeah. or something. Yeah. And I usually tend to avoid the trucks that don't have anybody. Like, mm. especially if I'm in a city that I haven't been to. Sure. Cause I'll go to where the people are. And yes. I think one of the, one of the things is that, you know, the, uh, the amount of time that I'm in line just makes me hungrier. Sure, I'm just sure. going to enjoy the food more by, by sure. the time I get to it. Uh, he, I'm going to go with, you know, it's good for the wall that I'm going to go with food trucks, but I, I do I, every now and then. Sometimes I feel like when I do choice, a Michelin, by the way. <clears throat> yeah, I, I feel like sometimes when I go to a Michelin star restaurant, I know I'm going to spend like $200, which is probably for myself, uh, and maybe $400 or for more. the entire meal. Uh, or more and well yes uh, i will have the wine pairing and sometimes i don't know i i don't know what to think about it sometimes i don't get you, quite that full too you have to look at I it as entertainment robbed. and you also have to look at it as a unique experience that you can't get anywhere oh, else totally. you yeah. know like, like you can, people should do it yeah. absolutely Especially i mean I, I love food don't do it every week you know unless unless i guess you <laughs> have the right. budget in which case then take me but it it puts things into context you know when you've had that absolute exquisite thing it's like wow that that's amazing you know, i mean there's there's memories i've had from some of my dining experiences that will last a lifetime you know i still talk about them with people that were there they put a lot of effort into it i've been watching a lot on youtube on the preparation of these of these foods of these michelin star restaurants mm -hmm. and what they do and what they go through in order to make that food uh, is just really amazing. And as far as shipping goes as well, that's something that, um, you know, I've, you know, have not appreciated in the past is, you know, the shipping of that fresh stuff right. into that restaurant. Right. That's where all that money goes to. So you're paying for something, you're paying for everybody involved. And you have chefs, you have sous chefs, you have, right. you know, shipping, you have, you know, the refrigeration bills, which are just like, out, you know, outstanding because they have like different phases in how they All the glasses, these. all the silverware. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, it's it's so, a lot goes into it beyond just the food itself, and you know it, it's totally. a whole experience. There's no getting around it. But uh, right, yeah, that that's one of the things I'm looking forward to in 2021. I hope is getting back to my all time favorite restaurant. 
fingers crossed that they're surviving. So what's it, what is it? Uh, it's in Oslo, right? No, my favorite restaurant's in London core by Claire Smith. Uh, wow. All time favorite. My top five all time dining experiences have come at chef Claire's hands in one way, shape or form, whether it was at her restaurant wow. or at, at her uh, previous posting. So I don't want to like uh, discourage your uh, 2021, but here's what I suspect will happen. Everyone's going to go nuts. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, once, once we get a, a good herd immunity without like, you know, some people say we need herd immunity by getting everyone infected. Let's not listen to those people. Mm, mm, bad idea. But her, the good herd immunity where like everyone gets vaccinated, we find out the vaccine uh, does work without like a lot of side effects. And uh, we start going out. Uh, the problem is things are going to be so packed. Oh my gosh. It's going to be Planes weird. are going to be so expensive. Yeah restaurants are going to be so expensive hotels are going to be through the roof the economics of this is is you know they're going to be swimming in it uh the travel so. industry they have a lot to catch up on well so, right right it yeah. will be catch up for sure but uh yeah i'm looking forward to it though i'm i'm yeah it's gonna be nice to get back to some so so normalcy. would you spend like for your 200 hundred dollar meal that was uh that was what you once spent on a michelin star restaurant would you have any qualms with a 400 hundred dollar meal just because it's the end of the pandemic and no. supply and demand no you wouldn't none whatsoever i mean it depends on where it is right i mean it depends on which restaurant we're talking about you know if there's if it's one i've been to before and i know how good it is I won't i won't blanch at that but if, if it's wow. something i haven't ever had before maybe i'd feel differently but yeah Depends. okay yeah so, I, I remember mean, i went with you and uh uh neil and a few others uh and uh it was i don't know if it was a michelin star restaurant but it was in denver uh, oh after yeah after an uber conf yep i know which one you're talking about and uh those waiters are sneaky they were just like oh would you uh, uh would you like to try a 50 dollar dessert whiskey and like I was born Before you know and it. raised, I was born and raised like a poor Hispanic in El Paso. And like, I have this inner battle in my head and in my conscience of like $50 for a whiskey. Right. No, I'm not going to spend that. That's ridiculous. But then there's the other side of my brain was just like, Do you know how good that's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> and guess who wins? I, and I think it's only think one it reasonable answer there. Yeah. And I think it has to do with like how the waiter just tells it to you right? and like right. describes it to you and just like, how can I live without this? So yes, yeah. please bring that to me. And it, it's, it is worth it. But well, I, still, it's I remember nuts. being at, at one restaurant with Neil and the waiter explained basically where the meal came from down to the, sh the sheep ate in this glen overlooking the lock you know and it just said this very evocative story about where this mutton came from i'm just like yeah yeah i mean just for the story alone i want to try that yeah. like that sounds I wish delicious taco bell would do that i don't think we want to know where taco bell's coming from like there's there's a run for the you know what afterwards if it comes to that i know it's funny because because uh, the goose of wild made that comment food truck and apologies to my digestive track later it reminds me of of the the john stewart lines around arby's i showed a clip of that to my son and now he rattles us off on a fairly regular basis all apologies to to arby's but uh well, let me throw a couple more at you here, and then then we'll, we'll call it a day. How about cats or dogs? Where are you on the pets? Dogs, dogs, hundred percent. All right, all right. Doberman. Uh, it's not that I favor those uh, kind of pets. Is that we started off with a Doberman, okay, uh, Don and I, and then uh, we got some other breeds uh, along the way. But uh, uh, he, uh, it seemed like he wanted another uh, Doberman, so we got a female Doberman. So we've been getting Dobermans ever since. Nice. I've got cats, and at least one of them was was poking around here while we were chatting. I don't. Uh, he didn't. Ju Usually, he jumps up and tries to mash my keyboard to try to mess with whatever I'm doing. So he likes to wait until I'm actually engaged in so some there, activity. I'm a I'm a Pomodoro technique practitioner. Yes, you are. At least I try to be, and uh, I try to work every 25 minutes. Sometimes I feel like I don't need a timer because I have pets. Uh, they inevitably come by every 25 minutes anyway and tell me to get up. So it's it's funny you minute. mentioned that because I actually have a tomato timer somewhere over my shoulder. I don't remember exactly where I hit it, but it's somewhere on this mess of a shelf behind me. And ironically enough, I got that when I did an event in Italy and I was at sort of like the speaker's dinner and I was chatting with this gentleman who had created them or was had made a run of them or something. And I was talking about how my friend David had one of those. And he said, oh, and he reaches into his bag and pulls it out and says, here, you can have this one. And I'm like, thank you. Like, coolest thing ever. So I do have a 
actual tomato timer sitting behind me. Oh, good. Excellent. That, that came from yep. the motherland. So it's all good there. Yep. How about tabs versus spaces? Um, last year I went into tab world. Okay. Cause I thought that was the best place to go. And I had been using spaces for years and years yep. and years. Uh, I started doing tabs and that just seemed like a dumb idea. So I went back to spaces. Okay. Spaces. All right. So, you know, I, I do appreciate that a tab can mean different things to different people, which means if you want tabs to be two spaces, sure, and I, like I want it to be four, we can look at the same code and not mess with each other, but a space is a space is a space. So I, I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty agnostic on that one. That's not a hill I'm going to die on, but <laughs> right. anyway, well, my friend, in true BBC fashion, we've decided today's session is going to be an hour and 15 minutes because you can't contain us in these arbitrary right. increments of time. And time has That's no right. meaning in a pandemic. So thank you so much for hanging That's out right. with me, my friend. I really appreciate yeah, your time. That was great. And appreciate it. I wish you and Don a, a happy and joyous new year. I hope you, you know, 2021, like, I'm not going to say anything. We're just going to go into it quietly. You know, if we make any cracks, then 2021 will unleash it upon us. So I'm just going to yeah. say 2021. I think years don't really get started until March anyway. That's probably we true. we got to, like, warm into it. Right, yeah. right. In, in my part of the world, literally warm into it. So I'm because like uh, the pandemic didn't really hit us in 2020 until March. Like I, it's true. I was traveling like in January, February, yeah, me too. Uh, but March was when really all hell broke loose. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, yeah. can this really exist? Apparently and, so. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, I, I wish you a happy new year and to our, our lovely right, listeners, listeners as well and viewers. I hope everybody has a safe and enjoyable holiday season here and, and we'll see everybody in 2021. Actually, my first guest is already lined up. We've got we've got the one and oh, only yeah. Scott Davis joining us nice. next week if you can believe that so we'll we'll go straight to the that'll be really good as well because i've been uh, paying attention to uh, accessibility and what oh, that yeah. actually means to people and uh, i notice a lot of my tv apps and stuff like that uh oh my video game i just uh one of the video games that i just uh, started playing was assassin's creed valhalla yeah and uh, they were like do you do you wish to have voices uh for your menus and uh, my first initial reaction was like, no, why would I? But then I was, I, you know, took me a few seconds again that the world doesn't revolve around me. And, you know, people like to play games that uh, don't necessarily have all the strength on some of their senses. So sure. that's why that's there. So, uh, you know, listening to Scott Davis talk about accessibility would just be something fantastic. Well, and the fonts are so small. I was I was playing FIFA sure. with my son last night and was watching something and I'm like staring at it. And I'm like... I've got a pretty oh. good sized TV. The font could be a little bigger. And you yeah. know, my son's like, well, I can, and I'm like, yeah, you can't even read it. And you got 13 year old eyes. So don't give me any of this crap about my <laughs> eyesight, kiddo. So yeah, you know, and get off my lawn while you're at it. But <laughs> anyway, well, Daniel, thank you again, my friend, my best to Don. And I will hopefully see you in person somewhere in 2021. Yeah, and I'll be sure person. to buy you an apple juice. So that's right. There we go. All right. Cheers, everybody. We'll see you All next right. week. See you, everybody.